Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a capacitor bank that has 1,500 microfarads at 400 volts. This capacitor bank will be able to be portably charged <clears throat> for use as a coil gun power source or for use as a xenon light power source. Now, I know in a previous video that I stated that I would be building a xenon light that is powered by your phone, that your phone triggers it when it takes a picture, but I've been working on this circuit day and night trying to make it work, and I haven't gotten it to work yet. What I was trying to do is take the audio signal coming from the phone when you take a picture it, and make it trigger a relay that triggers the flash circuit. But I have been able, unable to do this. So I will maybe be showing that in a later video. But for now, let's build an awesome capacitor bank. Let's get started. To build a capacitor bank, you're obviously going to need capacitors. Now these are all 200 volt capacitors. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire two capacitors in series, which gives it um, twice the voltage, but half the capacitance. So if I put these two 200, 1500 microfarad capacitors in series, they would be lowered to 750 microfarads, but 400 volts. And so if I put all these in series, and then all of them in parallel, I'll have a large 400 volt capacitor bank. It will all be charged and by this dual transistor oscillator that uh, ups the voltage in this transformer to a high enough voltage to charge all the capacitors to 400 volts. All the components will be placed inside this computer power supply along with this awesome analog gauge to tell how high the voltage is inside the capacitor bank and two switches to switch between the power and how much capacitance is inside the bank because you don't want too much capacitance when dealing with something like a xenon light bulb. So the first thing that we'll need to build is this oscillator circuit. Now this is relatively simple because it only requires two NPN transistors and two um, resistors, each one at 240 ohms and one watt. The transformer that I'm using is what I like to call the most useful transformer ever. You can take a look at it in another video because it's very useful. Now, how this is wired is the emitters of both transistors are wired to ground. The collectors are wired to one tap of the transformer. And the bases are wired through the resistor to the collector of the opposite transistor. This allows them to oscillate and create... Um, an alternating current voltage. So this is the circuit for my capacitor bank. <clears throat> this being the inverter that um, supplies this transformer with alternating current. And then we have a rectifier diode which charges this, the capacitor bank. Now after the capacitor bank is charged, it can be released on these two output pins into whatever you're using. Now, the level meter is used with a small analog meter and a 2 mega ohm resistor. So this is a circuit. Okay, let's build this power supply. So you want to take the two MOSFETs and put them on a good heat sink. And then take some wire and some solder and some resistors. You're going to want to start soldering your resistor pairs. Now these are total 220 ohm resistors. But I used four of them so that way it can equal a one watt resistor. Because if it's not one watt, then these resistors will overheat and catch fire. You can then tie both of the emitters to ground using a piece of wire. This one little piece of wire will act as our ground for the whole circuit. Then you need to tie the collector of one transistor to the base of the other one. Do the same with the other transistor. Also, make sure to use heat shrink tubing to cover bare connections of the resistor. This will allow you to make your circuit better. After this, you can take your inverter circuit and connect it to your transformer. 
Now after this is done, you should have your inverter circuit all hooked up to your transformer and connected to power. Now it's time to test it. So after it's all built up, it's time to insert it inside your case along with your capacitor bank. So I attached the heatsink that the two transistors are attached to by using a screw screwed into one of the holes in the back of the power supply. Now the transformer was just glued inside using hot glue. Now that your power supply is securely mounted inside your computer case, it's time to glue in all the capacitors. Now after you have all your capacitors glued inside your enclosure, it's time to take the capacitors and connect them together using wire. Make sure that the two capacitors are in series and these two series capacitors are in parallel with all the other capacitors. You will also want to add your switches into the two holes that you drilled. Now I'm making one switch to turn on the power and one switch to set the capacitance of the capacitor bank from high to low. Now after your switches are all uh, bolted into position, you can start to uh, solder all the wires together. Okay, now after everything has been wired up in the correct format, and everything's wired together correctly, according to this schematic right here, <clears throat> you can slide on the top of the case and you will be ready. After that long and tedious process of building this, your high voltage capacitor bank is now ready to be used. So let's test it out. I will connect these two leads to positive and to ground. Then I will also stick two extra copper leads out of these two holes so we can short it to see how big the spark will be. So I'll now turn on the power. As you can see the voltage starts rising. Now once it hits the red point that will mean the voltage is sufficient to set it off. Now once the voltage has reached its maximum potential I will short out these two wires and show you the maximum power of this bank. When fully charged this capacitor bank is at 400 volts at 150 microfarads, which equals about 126 joules of energy. So as you can see, it's fully charged. I'll shut it off, and then I will take this wire and short it up. Whew. Wow. I will now try and set it off using a screwdriver and two metal prongs sticking out. Okay, after it's fully charged, I will discharge it. Whoa. I have actually welded my screwdriver to those two contacts and welded these two contacts inside. That just shows you how powerful this is. This is the extent of damage of my screwdriver done by this capacitor bank. Now that this high voltage capacitor bank is done, it can be used for future videos where I will be showing you how to use this capacitor bank as a coil gun and how to use it as, you guessed it, a xenon flash power source. So this will be powering the xenon flash that will run off my phone. So, as always, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for my next video, which will be a follow-up of my washing machine fix video from a few weeks ago, where I actually install a new fuse. I will show more videos using this capacitor bank, in probably four videos. So, as always, thank you for watching.